Hello and welcome to the Synopsys Optical Solutions Group training series. This is the second of three videos illustrating the use of the tolerance capability in light tools. In this video, we will demonstrate the procedure for performing a tolerance sensitivity analysis. A sensitivity analysis is used to determine how the performance measures will vary as the tolerance changes across their defined range. This is somewhat analogous to the function of the parameter analyzer found under the optimization menu. In addition to the sensitivity chart and tabular output, we can also see the statistical summary of the predicted performance. In this example, we have an LED chip inside a cup filled with a phosphor material. The phosphor material has a slight dome on the top of the LED package. The shape of the dome is controlled by a series of parametric expressions and pickups. Tolerances have already been declared on the, both the dome thickness as well as the mean free path of the phosphor particles in the material. In addition, we have defined the average intensity CCT as our performance measure with a nominal value of 3500 degrees Kelvin. To access the sensitivity analysis property box, we select Tolerancing, Tolerance Sensitivities. Here we find two types of tolerance sensitivity calculations are available. The first is the individual sensitivities. The second is the quadratic fit sensitivities calculation. The individual sensitivities calculation calculates the effect on the performance measures for each tolerance independently. On the Sampling Controls tab, the user specifies the number of sample steps to be evaluated per tolerance. Here, we will specify nine steps and compute all sensitivities to begin the calculation for all tolerances. Each tolerance is scanned individually across the defined range with evaluations done at each step. If a simulation is needed to evaluate the performance measure, as is the case here, then a simulation will be run at each step using the number of rays currently specified in the simulation input. Now that the calculation is complete, we can look at the results. Selecting the desired sensitivity in the tree and choosing the sensitivity chart tab, we can see a chart of the results. The horizontal axis represents the tolerance value and the vertical axis represents the performance measure. The blue curve shows the actual calculated values while the green curve indicates a quadratic fit to the calculated data. The performance drop-down box can be used to view other performance measured charts. Tabular data for the charts can be seen on the sensitivity data tab. Back on the individual sensitivity node on the interactive tolerancing tab, we can now see statistical data for the analysis run. This data includes mean, standard deviation, and RSS values, as well as endpoint values for each performance measure. Since the tolerance sensitivities are evaluated independently, the statistical data assumes that the tolerances do not interact. In other words, changing the value of one tolerance does not affect the sensitivity curve of any of the other tolerances. The tolerances are assumed to be orthogonal. Also on this tab are the tolerance limits for each tolerance. Here you can change tolerance limits on this tab and, if the new limits are smaller than the original, the statistical output values will change without the need for rerunning the sensitivity analysis. This is a quick way to dial in tolerances to an acceptable performance value. The second calculation type is the quadratic fit sensitivities calculation. This calculation is different from the individual sensitivities in that, instead of sampling each tolerance independently, the entire parameter space is sampled and a multi-dimensional quadratic function is fit to the data. The resulting statistical data includes cross-terms between the tolerances. 
So long as the underlying quadratic function is a good fit to the actual data, this is a valid method and will be very helpful when running Monte Carlo analysis as we shall see in the next video. One quick way to determine the suitability of a given tolerance set for the quadratic fit method is to look at the individual sensitivity charts. Here, if the green quadratic fit is reasonably close to the blue data line, then we can anticipate a good correlation between the two methods. We can see that the mean free path tolerance is a better fit than the dome thickness tolerance, but the fitting error is not too large in either case, about 2 to 3 percent of the total performance range. Going to the Quadratic Fit Sensitivity Sampling Controls tab, we will enter 36 sample steps, click Apply, and click Compute Quadratic Fit. Now that the calculation is complete, we can see a fitting error of about 7.7, .7, indicating a reasonable fit to the simulated data. On the Sample Data tab, we can see a table with results from each trial and the pass-fail condition of each sample point. On the Interactive Tolerancing tab, we can see the same data fields as before. Comparing these results with the individual results, we can see that the mean, standard deviation, and RSS values are nearly the same. This tells us that the tolerances are nearly orthogonal. In addition, you can see the charts of the individual tolerances, which are very similar to the individual charts, but not identical. Now that we have obtained the sensitivity data for the tolerances, we are ready to perform a Monte Carlo analysis to determine the statistical distribution of systems manufactured with these tolerances. This will be the subject of the third video in this series. In this training video, we have demonstrated the procedure for performing a tolerance sensitivity analysis in preparation for Monte Carlo tolerance analysis. If you have any questions or need technical support, please contact us at lighttools underscore support at synopsis.com. Thank you for watching.